Hi, good morning all. So let's, let's kick off this session. We're talking about future retail spaces. So I think I'll start with uh, Ankit. Let me, let me put this to you. I mean, can you share your insights as far as the current demands and preferences of uh, tenants in retail spaces? So thank you for asking this question. You know, as a process, it's an under construction mall, so we meet a lot of uh, business development, you know, uh, representatives of retailers. Uh, there are certain changes which I see that, you know, very noteworthy, and uh, that's what I'd like to speak on. Specifically, you know, uh, if you see last, you know, time, you know, people, specifically the BD guys, you know, typically they were focusing on, uh, you know, where is my size, you know, what's my frontage, uh, what's the visibility. Over the last one year, I am seeing that they are talking much more about uh, typical placemaking in a particular mall, right? Which is a massive upgrade because I think somewhere retailers are also realizing that, you know, ultimately it's the customer who's going to come. And he's not just going to come to buy a shirt or a trouser. Unless we create some placemaking efforts in the shopping center, I think that may not entice the customer, maybe for the first time, but for the repeat purchase. So that's one particular, you know, I see that, you know, it's a massive, uh, you know, change in the retailer's perspective. Also, area, I still feel there is a little amount of, uh, you know, two-way discussions happening. There are some grade A brands who believe that, you know, uh, we'll have one good experience store in couple of, you know, grade A malls and let the internet do the penetration down into the market in various micro markets in a city. However, you also have people who would like to have smaller stores in all the malls, maybe with thinner lock-ins just to test the water. If it works, they stay or they move on. Okay, talking so, about area, can you, I mean, yeah. do you also face this challenge where you have retailers coming and asking for more area than what ideally should be given to them in a center? Without <laughs> naming few, uh, because I am here, <laughs> yes. And many times, not just from the perspective that, you know, uh, the area, do they, they really ask for a large area then, you know, per square foot what they can deliver. But many times, you know, a lot of group brands comes in and they do not do the cashment from a perspective of, you know, what will sell. I'll give you an example. Uh, we're doing a mall in Chennai. Now, few of the ethnic guys comes across and, you know, do ask us, you know, space for their ethnic stores, you know, which are 1,000, 1,200. You got to realize that, you know, talking about Chennai, a Delhi ethnic fashion versus the Chennai ethnic is way different, is way different. Oh. So while you're evaluating, I think, you know, specifically it happens with the group brands. You know, uh, that's why I find it so intriguing. But at the same time, Atul, you know, uh, we have met some retailers who have done their math very right. They've gotten that geotagging of customer. And they come up and say that, you know, this space, so is the customer, so much is the base, so I deserve 500 or 800 square foot. So, there are smart people like that, which makes it very exciting because, you know, they've read the catchment. Uh, and then, yes, uh, we were discussing yesterday, I think, about the pop-up stores, uh, which was initially not taken, you know, in a very uh, positive way when this word came in because we all wanted a lot of stability, that, right? you know, the guy should be there for a longer duration. But that particular concept is working very well. There are people who have done their maths, and they want to test drive, you know, uh, test the waters of that market with thin uh, leasing terms, you know, trying about smaller lock-in, see how things happen, and then evolve in a better way. How do you end up curating your, your tenant mix in a center? I mean, do you do... You do so, uh, good question. Of... Now I don't see my, you know, team as a leasing team. So, you know, we keep on talking about leasing. It's a typical time, you know, we, we are talking about targeted tenant, you know, uh, resourcefulness. So you have to target what is coming, how much it is relevant, because uh, ultimately, you know, it is the time, not just of a year or two, what you look forward, you want that sustainability, you look forward for that particular growth. So picking up the right tenant, uh, you know, is, is becoming a real challenge because people are testing, you know, so much. And then with thinner lock-ins, you know, you always have that stress. So it's exciting, but yes, uh, stressful as well at times to make a right things, how technology will change the world. Now, look at uh, the way Shopstop came out with that magic mirror. When I look at that particular kind of an initiative from a uh, retailer, 
we've got three, four hours max, you know, when you go to a shopping center on an evening. Now, imagine the town in the customer is spending in that particular store because of such things. It is not just convenience. You made it very playful. So his interaction now with your brand is, you know, far much more than a trouser or a shirt. Yeah. So such brand recall works. So we're working on that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Franklin, coming to you. Hello. Uh, how do you outline the key strategies uh, you're implementing to unlock the potential of retail spaces? I mean, uh, thank you, Atul, for this wonderful session and question. See, first of all, when we talk about retail, it's reimagining the retail space as we are curated to every new developments which are taking place year after years. And to brief some of the strategies, what I feel that, first of all, we need to understand what we intend to deliver to the customer. Just not make a mall, but try to make it as a retail destination. Uh, when I say uh, making a retail destination, you need to integrate the uh, shopping experience along with your entertainment. You need to have some rooftop restaurants wherein people come, they enjoy. So the purpose of visiting mall is just not shopping, but having a different experience. Secondly, uh, what I feel, uh, you know, omni-channel is one of the ways where a uh, lot of people understand the basics so we understand the nitty gritties of various collaborating with the brands, their requirement. But these strategies are very important to integrate the customer engagement because until as the customer engages themselves with the uh, idea of being in the shopping malls, uh, we will not be able to curate the right purpose of establishing any mall, whether it's sold model or whether it's a lease model mall. Third, going forward, we need to uh, make sure that, you know, all the uh, segments what we are traditionally we normally onboard as an as an anchor or a mini anchor or an hyper we need to experiment out with something new innovations so that we can experiment out we should not be afraid of uh, getting uh, the response but yes looking into the size of the mall understanding the uh, demographic factors the purchase behavior all these things has to be integrated and finally what i feel we need to have more and more social, you know, engagements. Like uh, most of the malls, uh, they have started doing it in South, as uh, finally addressed, that they make a good, uh, uh, you know, entertainment-based models wherein they involve a lot of uh, cooking shows, a lot of, uh, you know, activities which are related to the uh, homemakers, they come, they present themselves and that again integrates the interest of the society as well and finally ensures that, you know, all of them equally participate in the ongoing activities of the mall. So now when we cultivate this habit of the churning around process, we will see that the traditional concept of mall development, filling it with us with the category mix, and the brand running goes more into as a social, you know, environmental, eco-friendly process. So that will definitely help all the developers to get the right mix. Any any specific collaborative uh, efforts that you made with tenants to, you know? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, when we said uh, about the collaboration in our malls, uh, Paris Biltech has been with in the industry for last three decades almost. And we have developed a lot of such activities every week in our malls. We gather a lot of uh, community participations, events, uh, homemakers wherein they participate. We also award them up so that, you know, that engagement becomes a practice uh, every month, every quarter. And we started getting good response. Going forward with the upcoming projects also, we, we are planning to develop an area wherein, you know, you have certain uh, space allocated for a function wherein people participate. They integrate their intentions of social gathering and this is how we plan ahead to go with. Thanks. Great, thanks. Abhinav, coming to you. Uh, how do you balance the need for... F how do you balance the need for physical retail with growing demand for, thanks, for experiential and community-driven spaces? 
So you see, uh, for balancing the need for physical retail and uh, the demands, it's like integrating the digital elements and uh, meaningful interactions, I would say. Because uh, it's all about now community interactions and giving that experiences which is required, which is missing with the digital or the online sales. So that's what we are in trying to integrate in between to balance the two. Nice, thanks. Um, how do you how do you see the role for for uh, physical retail evolving in this age of digital transformation? I mean, you know, since we've seen. <laughs> So, uh, you know, physical retail is going to evolve more into creating uh, experiential, uh, you know, zones and uh, creating more community interactions, which is missing with the digital age. Digital age, of course, it's, it's helping us out and it's uh, supporting the physical retail, I would say. So, uh, both are important, but then, you know, the kind of experiences what you can generate or the interactions which can really happen. You know, you can you can possibly have more of uh, immersive, uh, I would say, you know, spaces. That's going to be again through physical retail only. So that's how we're trying to integrate the two together. And you think it's there's going to be a, a balance. It's it's going to be a balance. Yes. Thanks. Okay. CS coming to you. Uh, what what role do you see technology playing? Uh, in the future? Uh. Well, uh, some 30 odd years back, there was a study done by Harvard on shopping malls. Uh, amongst various insights, uh, they found out there were two innovations and adaptation of that, which led to the revolutionization of shopping malls. And those were air conditioning and escalators. If such a study is done maybe five, seven years down the line, I'm sure uh, technology will be at the top of the list. Because technology enables a retailer or a shopping mall developer to give an immersive experience to the customer. And I feel once the customer is used to such an experience, uh, then uh, he will not settle for mediocrity. So technology is here to stay and uh, all those who have already adopted technology are reaping benefits of the same. Uh, uh, Azote is a very good example who have leveraged technology uh, to the best of their advantage, right from their storefront uh, to their price tags, uh, their uh, trial rooms and uh, the cash chills. They have used technology. But do you see the customer using all that technology in the stores? I mean, if not all, but some are. Some certainly are uh, using, especially the young generation uh, is very keen to experiment with all the technological options that are available at their hand. Uh, from a mall developer's perspective, where people are using technology is the parking, trying to make a smooth entry exit, uh, on the wayfinding uh, signages, uh, on the concierge desk, uh, even uh, to some extent the washroom. So that is where technology is being uh, utilized by the developer. Uh, from the retailer's perspective, they are using this beacon uh, technology uh, to offer discounts based on the location of the customer. So I feel that uh, technology is certainly going to revolutionize the way we are currently shopping and experiencing retail spaces. Thank you. Any specific technological uh, innovations or trends uh, that, uh, you are incorporating in your uh, development? See, your uh, development? from a mall developer's perspective, wherever we are able to uh, uh, deploy technologies, basically parking spaces, uh, signages, even uh, 3D holographic projections, that is where we are trying to give that uh, better experience to the customers. Thanks, thanks. Nandini. Coming to you. How do you envision future retail spaces unlocking the full potential of mall developments? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Adil. So, uh, retail, as we know, is ever evolving and changing, and uh, we're learning every day. So, uh, some of the important things um, we foresee in future retail spaces, of course, is uh, focusing a lot on experience in retail. That's one. 
it doesn't matter what the positioning of the center is. It could be a value center, it could be a premium or a luxury center. The one most important thing which is changing and evolving is the experience that the mall offers. Everybody from the time, wants that experience. Absolutely. So, you know, from the time you enter the center to the time you exit, the mall experience, the service level staff, uh, the technology, it should be a seamless entry. Uh, we focus, uh, as developers now, we focus a lot on the storefronts, right? In the earlier days, uh, retailers were pretty much, you know, creating their own shop fronts and all, but uh, globally, if we see, there is a lot of focus done on shop fronts and experience. But if you say a specific requirement for the shop front, do you want to retailers? Yes, we want actually. <laughs> mein. So there is a very strict design process, and... Uh, and not just for a large mall, but also uh, for a small high street that we set up, we really got involved in the shop front and the, the experience and the design that even the localized retailers offered. So that was one thing that, um, and that's still evolving, we're still learning from that. If you engage with the customer, if you sort of enhance uh, the entrance experience, definitely the shopping will happen. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing, of course, is the technology aspect where, um, you know, again, you got to knowing the customer, knowing the customer behavior, uh, the moment, the you know, I mean, the technology, how you kind of uh, learn the, the buying behavior, the kind of spend they have. That, of course, uh, with the analytics and now with the retail GPT and, you know, the, the technology things that we are learning, that's one thing which will keep adding and improving. So, uh, so yeah, future centers uh, will focus a lot on uh, experience and technology. In terms of uh, the kind of future spaces, uh, again, this is, uh, you know, a lot of new kinds of retail experiences are coming up. There are mixed-use developments that are coming up, which, you know, which are probably a combination of office retail, uh, retail plus hotel, or combination of all three. Uh, down in North India, we're also seeing a lot of SEO developments, which are more localized. That's a new trend that's coming up. Of course, uh, you have, uh, you know, the metro uh, malls, you've got a few of them as well. That's also a new thing, and I'm seeing a lot of coming up in Delhi as well. So, yeah, so I think um, India is still uh, evolving. Retail, organized retail is uh, far away from, you know, the global markets right now. And, uh, and yes, I think uh, that's, that's how we see the future retail coming okay. up. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Gurvanit. Hey. Uh, you see, with the rise of e-commerce and changing uh, consumer preferences, uh, are you designing retail spaces to remain like flexible and adaptable? Or hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, e-commerce and online and offline. The debate has going been going on for ten years. Actually, yes. this was uh, one of our topics. I was recruiting a management trainee, and uh, that was the topic for GD. So I had had some pointers uh, coming in from the new generation, which I will share. Um, but I believe that uh, uh, the right sizing has to happen. Uh, we have to first accept that e-commerce is there to stay. Uh, they're growing exponentially and, and the percentage will eventually keep growing, right? So there is no looking back on that. Uh, but as a country, uh, India has a lot of unorganized space, right? So the organized space, which is online and shopping centers, uh, both are holding hands and probably growing and, and uh, kind of decreasing the unorganized percentage and growing together in, in that regard, right? So, uh, but how to, uh, how, to answer your question, how are we, uh, you know, uh, looking at things? Yeah, definitely first, uh, you know, the first thing is that we have to uh, right size our malls. Uh, and the planning has to begin uh, right from the scratch, right? So we have to understand that uh, a mall is a community center. How, how do you arrive at the right size? I mean, if so, any development so, so that you... So, see, uh, uh, it's a very tricky question. It, it depends on the catchment, obviously. If you're making a neighborhood center, then you stick to the neighborhood center. If you're making a destination mall, then you stick to the... But uh, you take into yeah. account something like a primary catchment or a secondary catchment and say that there's so much of population, so the center of my... the size of my center needs to be X or, or whatever. Yeah, so, again, uh, first you understand what's the universe in India. If there are 350 to 400 brands which can absorb an A-grade shopping center, uh, then firstly you need to identify what are the categories which are directly competing with online. I mean, we can't deny that all of us sitting in this room have uh, become spoiled for choice and we also shop online, right? Although we are working in this space. But 
so, so we need to understand that we need to analyze those categories who are uh, directly competing with the online space. Uh, some of the brands uh, from online space have proven that they actually are looking at uh, you know offline presence. So, so I mean, I can name a few brands. That's, that's one of my questions yeah. at the end of the panel. Yeah. So, uh, so firstly, uh, it's it's now an omni-channel uh, methodology. So both. Uh, online online uh, brands are looking at offline presence for their positioning for look and feel so you need to first identify those brands because the new generation is moving towards uh, omni channel uh, shopping so that that's something which needs to be addressed uh, right sizing is basically uh, if it's a 350 to 400 brands universe and you're making a destination mall i think uh, in india presently in a large city in a metropolitan city also if you are making a, a large shopping center, it should not be more than a 600,000 square feet carpet. Because if you want to play with options, if you want to uh, create a community center, that, that's the right size for a large shopping center. Because going uh, right now, maybe because you know online space is growing and people are coming and, and there is no entertainment option, so people are coming. But you have to look at the future. So future is going to be more competitive, right? So if we, like, like we all realize that larger multiplexes uh, are the game of past now, right? Because there's so much of content available. So we need to downsize on, on multiplex screens. Although we need to have them because it's uh, a different kind of experience. So one of them uh, is reduction in, uh, you know, multiplex uh, sizes. Second thing is reduction in sizes of shopping centers, even if it's a regional center. And then uh, what we do is, for, uh, what, what I would answer is that the malls which we've built from scratch, there's a few malls which we've acquired, but the malls which we've built from scratch, we've been very uh, careful in planning a lot of open spaces. So how do you plan a terrace and build a community center around it? You, you, you landscape it with play areas, you uh, put a football uh, you know, training academy in that, uh, you, you create uh, uh, areas for education, right? A uh, lot of restaurant spaces should have outdoor access because, uh, you know, restaurants, uh, we believe, have to have natural light coming in, have to have outdoor seating, and, and that's the future. Uh, that's what has happened in Europe, in US. You look at entertainment centers. Uh, entertainment centers can't be replicated online, right? So a uh, lot of good entertainment centers are now coming to India, uh, and a and lot of uh, foreign capital is coming in that category. Uh, huge bowling lanes with alcohol, adult entertainment, uh, you know, Disney parks, all of this space is evolving, which will eventually become the part of a community center, which is a shopping center of future. So I think these are the elements which you need to be uh, careful with when you're planning a shopping center now, considering the e-commerce growth. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, you want to add something to that? Just one thing, when you are asking about the right size of the shopping center, I think uh, all, all of us from the developer community understand that it's all about the FAR. Nobody wants to lose on the FAR. So whatever is available, you want to build that. Why would you lose on the space? So that's the main defining factor. And then how to use that FAR is something different. But I, I agree with this point, you know. You know the return the ground and one can give. So as much of that particular FSI which I can utilize for FAR in your case. Absolutely. You know, on the ground and one will always be, you know, one aligning factor which will come, right? So many times it happens that, you know, we, we get a great, you know, place where we feel that we can extend, go beyond those, you know, the, the areas which you mentioned. And uh, the usage which I can do with other class of asset, you know, may not yield that kind of a return. So there's always that mix and blend which keeps on happening. I agree. There is no thumb rule to success. We've all uh, done a lot of work and then went back here, should have done it differently. But yeah, uh, that's the entire BD fun is about is all Absolutely. I can say. You, know, you, you have your pluses, you have your highs, you have your lows. Yeah, I mean, to answer this, I mean, say for example, if you're having uh, six departmental stores in your mall, I mean, in, in, in a way, we are kind of cannibalizing uh, them, right? So that can be delivered through four departmental uh, stores. So what I'm trying to say is that if you right size your asset, if you uh, zone it well, if you category, uh, the percentage is sorted out well, uh, FSI is a big challenge, which I totally agree because the land prices are untouchable now and you have to use the best of FSI. We, uh, I mean, at Lakeshore also we face that a lot. And how do we optimize on FSI? But that again, uh, 
you know, boils down at the planning stage that if, if it has to be absorbing the entire FSI, then uh, there is a mixed use uh, absorption which has to be in place. Uh, but you can't start, uh, you know, a shopping center planning with uh, going overboard of, uh, with the size. That's something which is a non-starter. Okay. Rohit, coming to you. Uh, what measures do you guys normally take to ensure that shopping centers can involve, evolve alongside changing consumer preferences? Yeah. Thanks, Atul. And, I think and market dynamics. Wow. Uh, it's a pretty open-ended question. I think, uh, as everybody is mentioning, and all of us know, retail is evolving uh, every day. I think, uh, to answer it, uh, what measures do we take? Uh, uh, definitely, I agree with my friends at first. To build a mall, FSI is to be used is mandatory. There are promoters uh, here around, so we need to ensure that we use the proper FSI. And then comes the science behind it, uh, building an asset, whether it's a mall, whether it's an office, whether it's a hotel. Uh, coming back to malls, uh, the way uh, we now designing, we are actually uh, in, in planning and designing stages for a couple of our assets. What we definitely doing is uh, we keeping it a lot of open spaces uh, in our new centers. Uh, uh, to give you a perspective uh, on WISAC, uh, what we're building is a 1.2 million square feet, but at the ground level we have almost around 2 lakh square feet, square feet, which is absolutely open, uh, uh, which will have a lot of interactive stuff, a lot of green stuff uh, for the kids to play around, to people to hang around. What we're also doing is uh, entire, we have a 17 acre parcel, 13 acre we're building a mall. Across the mall boundary, we're creating a, a jogging track or a running track because we believe that asset needs to be used uh, not only at the time of working hours, but also uh, early morning or late nights as well. So it, it builds a community and people come there. On the rooftop, uh, again, we're building around one and a half lakh square feet of, again, open spaces. Uh, interestingly, what we've done is on the land, we had a 150-year-old banyan tree. What we've tried to do is we've retained that tree and we've created an atrium around it. And we've, 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 what we're trying to do is we're creating a lot of indulgence, a lot of cafes around it. So a uh, lot of green elements, a lot of designing elements, uh, so that uh, it's not only about shopping, uh, it's more than shopping. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think uh, these are the few measures we take, definitely. And then uh, I think uh, sustainability and ESG is, 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 is a big thing now. Uh, how do we really give back to the environment and the way we uh, design our malls, uh, whether they are gold rated or platinum rated. Uh, we see very less platinum rated malls in the country, uh, wherein uh, office side, uh, we have all the buildings, most of them are now platinum rated. So I think that's one big thing uh, all of us should uh, try to strive there. Uh, because if you look at global markets, uh, uh, it's all about sustainability, it's all about uh, giving back. So I think that's a very big thing uh, which is coming our way as well. So these are a few things we uh, really look at while, while designing. Yeah. Great. Um, Ankit, coming back to you, uh, how, do you, how do you integrate retail spaces surrounding community and enhancing the social impact? Uh, it, it's, uh, I think it's a similar extension what Rohit was mentioning. Like you to have that particular impact, you know, in today's time, we need to have those spaces where people can come, not just for buying, you know, uh, specifically India where the weather is not on your side, you know, things are in terms of infrastructure is, you know, maybe Delhi is a little different example, but you talk about Bombay and all, we have real difficulties actually to go out. Now, uh, contrarily, you know, I was speaking to, uh, there's a stall of Bentley Associates, uh, their architect team, Nick was speaking that South Africa people have stopped going malls because they don't have issues of land and crunch of space. So they have their own meaningful things beyond shopping. Uh, they have their public places where they go, interact, have fun. We don't have it over here. So that's where the, I think, we're picking from what Rohit is mentioning that you're trying to retain that particular tree and do things around. As developers today, I feel that it's our job, specifically when you're doing larger centers, that we have those public spaces. Because the society at one point of time will buy at a particular store once, twice. But to keep asking them to come back, 
you need to have those events and you need to have space for that. In fact, sometimes when I look back, I think the mall manager's job today is not a mall manager. It's an event manager. Because every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, there are events happening. And you've got to be ahead of the curve, plan your events. And that's how the social bonding will come. Otherwise, with the food what we eat today, if you're asking people to leave Netflix and Prime and come down on an afternoon, uh, without an event manager, we better best of, you know, we will try our luck. It's, it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I, I'm going to throw a couple of questions to the entire panel over here and I'd like all of you to give your inputs on that. Uh, have you guys encountered any notable success stories or challenges which you would like to share? I mean, measuring of future retail spaces, uh, what kind of KPIs are used, you know, in a way to evaluate uh, their performance. I mean, feel free to. I think we all talk about giving the optimized area to retailers, right? So we've had some stories where retailers are uh, asking for larger, especially I think uh, in the supermarket or the, you know, the grocery segment, we noticed uh, everyone coming and asking for like a 10 to 12,000 or a 15,000 square feet. Um, and, uh, you know, we said, we actually got into the entire design and planning and said, okay, fine, your categories are here. Let's get this completely designed on your behalf and we'll manage it in 6,000 square feet, right? And, um, and I think, uh, so this was a case where he's actually achieving a very high trading density. Uh, from a 6,000 square feet supermarket and that too in a neighborhood complex. So that happened. Uh, so I think the right size is something which again, given a retailer, he would ask for, uh, you know, as much as area that we can give, but it's for us to assess and sometimes really get involved in their, uh, in their business to see whether they really need that sort of area, optimized area or not. So. Atul, I would just like to add one point which I always have been coming across since I have been uh, a long way journey from the brand side I mean, for the last seven years that I have on the developer side now. See, uh, when you offer a space to a retailer, you know, everybody would want to have a better visibility, a better insight about the accessibility of their customers. But the best part, which I believe, you know, there has to be a checkpoint of the, you know, uh, parameters that if they're not hitting that sales figure after a certain point of time, maybe three years down the line, you know, we need to curate some other brand and endorse them up. Because there have been a lot of brands who occupy a large space in your malls and at the end of the year, maybe three years, four years, they uh, fail to achieve the targeted, you know, sales figures and finally the loss. Up how, do you, how do you define that optimum I'll sale tell you, number? sir. Uh, I mean, the idea is that a uh, lot of supermarkets, when I used to be in a brand called Evoke Home Decor, we opted for a couple of options in various malls across Pan India. Now, initially, we took almost 15,000 square feet because that was the benchmarking of my format of expansion. But uh, reducing uh, further after four years, five years, we reduced that 15,000 into 8,000 square feet because half of the portion was not been utilized, maybe the sales per square feet which we define from a retail perspective was not coming up from, the, from those dead areas. So we need to you know, understand uh, there has been a lot of uh, online brands like Pepper Fry, they don't display all the physical product in the layout or the area of the demarcated locations. Couple of things which they would like to you know, optimize in the area of 6,000, maybe 7,000 carpet, Going forward, the rest uh, things you can you can display it in your digital you know uh, screen so that whenever it is required, you can get it ordered and they can be you know positioned and can be shifted there. So this is how I believe the developers is also on the safer hand. He gets uh, uh, more options to uh, get more mix in the system rather than giving uh, to one brand at. A Let me ask you this: as a as a developer, have you asked any of the retailers to downsize? Yes, of course. Uh, if I talk about uh, one of my projects in uh, Paris 133 uh, Noida, which we had launched in the year tw in 2019, we had offered an area of uh, you know uh, 18,000 to one of the decor brands. Initially, they had a long vision to bring up a lot of concepts, but going forward, since uh, you know 
you, the customer has a lot of choice in and around. There are multiple mall in the vicinity of two kilometers, maybe five kilometers. And these days, a couple of uh, people who have migrated from different cities for a purpose of a job or maybe for some other reasons, interstate tran uh, transits. So they prefer to have less furnitures. They prefer to have more of mobility concepts. So that brand uh, had really, you know, slashed on in terms of sales, coming back to us stating that, you know, we will not be able to afford the kind of rentals we are paying because the ROI or you can say the EBITDA which was supposed to be met didn't met. So gradually it is a circumstantial cases wherein you have to be with the retailers because you can't afford to ask them to leave altogether. So this is one of the examples uh, which we did it for our mall and might be going forward uh, things are changing so it could be multiple other ways to do. Yeah, I Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, it cannot be circumstantial, I'm just let, uh, I think all our people over here on this side and I'm sure from the brand side, our key job is to ensure the right efficiency of the mall. How do you utilize every square feet of your mall efficiently? Uh, downsizing on the brands, I think we've been doing forever. Uh, yes, you need to partner with them, work with them and show them what really matters and how how they can reduce their cost and efficiencies, so right? So I think to avoid this this challenge of downsizing retailers going, you know, I think it's it's important that from the very beginning they're given the right optimum size and yeah. not a larger area than what they really See, require. See, Atul, so uh, it's all trend based, right? Uh, 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 at leisure, post retailer will come and say, I need 5,000 square foot, uh, but ideally, if you don't need more than 2,000 square foot, then why do you give Exactly. So obviously, we all of us start with that, but again, we've been seeing trends, right? At leisure, which used to be okay in 1,000, 1,200, now don't want anything less between two and a half, three thousand. Cinema, I think all of us were six months ago, we were bullish. So I think if the category is growing and, and, you know, it warrants giving them a little larger area, then makes sense as long as the throughputs yeah. are, you know, kind so of it's not only about downsizing, it can also be about upsizing, right? Uh, if you look back cinema six, nine months ago, I'm sure all of us had planned 11 screen, 12 screen on our up, upcoming mall. Now you talk to them, it's seven screens. Yesterday I had an interesting conversation, uh, uh, which is pretty innovative. I can't even spell it out. So, uh, yeah, so you really don't know. So, uh, challenge for us is because we are in a real estate space and we are, uh, our assets are not so flexible that we can't, are not, uh, what do you call, customizable. We have to break, build, break, build. So, uh, we need to be more efficient and only partner with these guys in terms of the cost aspects and prove them that how it's going to be more beneficial. And I think that's when we can take it from there. So, do you want to? Uh, so, I mean, also a lot of retailers are taking decisions uh, and I'm sure that uh, it happens over time, but with two to three seasons, if the performance is very high and if they start feeling that uh, the store size and the width is uh, not getting delivered, they, they start asking for more spaces again. And at leisure is one category which is really performing uh, very well right now and is asking for a lot of spaces in all the malls. But is it going to be a long-term sustainable, uh, uh, I mean, time will only tell, right? So right now, all of us really want to give more space to this, uh, to this category and other categories who are doing well. Formal category also, there are a few players, uh, you know, denim category, there are a few players which are asking for more spaces. They're performing uh, uh, really well. But again, this is the reality of today. Uh, three years from now, if there is a downsizing required, because each square feet carries a cost for them and for us, right? We, we're all looking at highest per square feet returns. Um, so yeah, that, that's what it is. Uh, one story which I think the success story which uh, uh, was coming to my mind, I, I think we're short on time, but uh, I'll just share the uh, story of Arya Mall, uh, which we have in Gurgaon. Uh, my friend here is also a partner uh, there. Uh, so I mean, uh, when we opened the mall in two weeks, we had to shut because of COVID. And uh, uh, Obviously, everybody struggled and a lot of people who were under fit out decided to shut fit outs. There were some people who uh, decided to shut stores. So when we reopened after that, uh, there was a huge vacancy, uh, which was a 100% leased mall before opening, became a 55% uh, occupied mall with a 45% vacancy. So, uh, you know, and, and the trading per square feet was dismal, uh, sub 500 rupees, and we had to really work hard on it. I think the trade secret there was that we identified that you know, we should, we should find 25 best retailers who we think are the magnet brands and for that people will come and 
you know, find and, and, and footfalls will increase. And we, we partnered with those 25 brands. We went to them, we said that, you know, whatever it takes for you to, uh, you know, come to this mall, because content is the king. If you don't get the content right, I mean, you've invested thousands of crores in the assets. Uh, if the content is not uh, right, it will fail. So we identified those 25 brands, we were able to crack 20 out of them. Uh, they made presence in uh, Arya, and Arya is a success story today, uh, trading at a very high number, and uh, uh, it's 100% occupied. Yeah, great, great. Avinav, you want to add something to that? We're running short on time. Yeah, so, so in terms of uh, success stories, I think everybody knows that we've just built a mall in Chandni Chowk, and it's been uh, coming out very well. And we've had a lot of cases where downsizing has been done, specifically because we didn't have too much of an area. The pricing was very high, of course. So that was one consideration which every retailer had to understand that they need to reduce their space, they need to be more efficient spaces. So that's where we kind of, uh, you know, integrated then the entire thing with them and uh, forced everyone and put our foot down that we have to do a smaller and a more efficient store. And we've been successful in that uh, to quite some extent. In terms of uh, other things also, it was like tapping the unknown on unorganized market completely and getting in them into the organized spaces. So, it took us a long time, but Chandi then Chalk's yes. It's typically been uh, an, an organized uh, market all along. You've come up with this center there. So. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, it took us a lot of time for making those uh, first-time retailers entering into a mall, making them understand why they have to be inside a mall. But uh, yes, uh, finally we've been able to kind of uh, do that work and get a lot of retailers there. Yeah. Okay, before I'm asked to step off the stage, one quick question to everybody. We see a lot of, sorry, just give me last question. Uh, we see a lot of D2C brands today uh, who are there in the market and do you think that this is like a passing phase or are they kind of here to stay? Uh, I definitely believe uh, they are here to stay, uh, but obviously it's a percentage game. Out of 100, maybe 8, 10 uh, will survive. You will have a couple of guys who will be unicorns and I think uh, they are doing great jobs. Now we have dedicated D2C conferences happening as well and after digital. So what's happening in their life is, uh, we met so many of them, they get stuck on digital at around 80, 100 crores. So the next phase of growth happens for them only when they come offline. So yeah, they are here to stay. Sorry, in interest of time. I am saying yes. <laughs> Nandri. I agree with you, Rohit. Um, we've had great examples already. We've seen Boat, we've seen Bliss Club, many more already entering retail. And uh, yes, totally, I see them becoming unicorns and many more to come. In fact, as malls, uh, I think most malls are also dedicating a certain uh, pop-up area where D2C can experiment and see the market for them offline. So yes. I can't agree more. Uh, I totally agree because uh, fashion is changing. We can't afford to wear same, you know, uniform everywhere. So these online, the boom which started will gradually had to land out somewhere as an offline stores. I never expected that Nika would uh, open an offline stores, but I could see them in some of the premium locations. And even in my mall, I managed to <laughs> get one of them. So. I believe, you know, the experience of the product which you would see physically and feel it can't be experienced online. So there is no other way and alternative than to be offline. Yes. Well, I concur with the thoughts of my colleagues and uh, I also believe that some of them will do so well that they, they will come uh, to our malls as well. Thank you. Ankit? I, I, I agree with them. In fact, you know, I'll say, why not? Tell me when a particular brand comes up with a new product which we lease because he is coming from a great fraternity. You know, suppose if Landmark comes with some, something, you know, Shop Shop comes with some other format. We are willing to give it a try. The guy who's been tested, who has seen the meat, consumer is liking and he is growing. As a shopping center, you know, individual, isn't that particular responsibility also to take it to a next level? You know, so you have to help them out for that particular yeah. matter. Great. Have enough? So, D2C brands, uh, definitely the whole concept is here to stay. But it's all about evolving and the brands will obviously get on to the next level. Some of them may be out of the league. But yes, it's, it is there, it has to be there, it will be there. 
like mama Great. story today yeah, yeah, of course so, so all the d2c ways. brands over here you know who to get in touch with they are all sitting here ready to give you spaces <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely thank you so much guys it's been very interesting thank you thank you very much